Hey folks, I'm Ken Klippenstein. This is Breaking Points, The Intercept Edition. I'm joined today by my colleague, investigative reporter for The Intercept, Dan Bogoslaw, who um, broke a very important story a couple weeks back that we know significantly more about today that we want to talk to you about. That story was about the war powers resolution advanced by Bernie Sanders and ultimately blocked by the White House. Um, what we know now that we didn't know then was a lot of what was going on behind the scenes in Congress, how this story came to pass, how that resolution was killed, what its current status is, which we're talking with Dan about today. And what's really interesting about all this to me is the fact that uh, Dan really caused this entire firestorm to take place by just walking up to Senator Sanders, asking him about the status of that legislation. Sanders made a comment uh, saying, yes, I have the votes for it. We're going to go ahead and pursue it. Unbeknownst to us, or at least to me and probably much of the public at the time, was the fact that Bernie actually had no plans to do that and that that question actually triggered this entire uh, 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 range of range of events. So, Dan, can you tell us uh, how that happened and really why why are media not doing this more and posing these questions? And Because and, this is really press at its best, is posing questions, putting pressure on senators. And I think uh, what we saw here was you really strong-armed Senator Sanders by just asking him about the status of that thing he's talked about before and got him to have to do something about it. Yeah, well, I think that, um, you know, a lot of what you see with congressional reporting is this sort of uh, horse race to break small crumbs of news, to beat out uh, other large news outlets for, you know, information that's probably going to come out in, in one respect, uh, one way or another. Um, and so for me, the really exciting thing about congressional reporting um, is the opportunity to kind of do your background research, talk to staffers, um, try to get as much intel about what's happening behind the scenes as possible. And then, you know, go into the hill with a game plan to try to uh, ferret out information that, you know, um, is simply not going to, to come from mainstream news outlets. Well, what you're describing just sounds like the job of journalism to me. Why does that not happen? Why was there no one else of the entire press pool? I mean, you're a relatively young guy. You're still fairly new to congressional reporting. Why were you the first person to walk up to him? My understanding from our conversations offset was that the senator was just standing there and you thought, hey, well, here's an important question. I'll just ask him it. Why did no one else do well, that? It's shocking, you know, when you're in there and you see, you know, U.S. senators walking by and you have these journalists waiting in the wings and sometimes they'll just let you know a senator you know, walk right by them because they're sort of waiting to pounce on um, you know appropriations chair for you know spending bill or um, you know foreign relations chair if, if there's a you know a, a, a foreign policy debate leading the news cycle but really what you see is just these competing factions to break um, news that's going to come out one way or another and uh, you know, critical piece of legislation like a a uh, bill like the Yemen War Powers Resolution, which is taking power away from the president um, and, you know, trying to create some mode of accountability uh, for another nation which has been waging a, a war that has led you know, millions to the brink of starvation. There's no um, there's there's no appetite. There's no appeal if that's not running the news cycle. And so these critical issues just get completely pushed to the wayside. Um, and it's, uh, I do think it's a sort of abdication of responsibility for reporters. Um, at the same time, I think the incentive structure for corporate media is such that, you know, they're all trying to beat one another out for their editors um, to break that crumb, that kernel of news before everyone else. So, um, it, I mean, how much of this is political? Because I know that it's very clear that the White House didn't want the War Powers Resolution to pass. And just to give folks a sense of what that is, uh, you alluded to it before, it's basically making it so that Congress has say in uh, what, what, the, what the White House decides, decides with regard to uh, military conflicts, wars that we become engaged with, which to me is like so uncontroversial. I mean, this was the whole point of the Constitution is the president is not a king. We're going to have checks and balances. We're going to have different... Uh, in theory now, different different uh, branches of government. And and the decision to go to war is is very explicitly the domain of uh, Congress. So it's crazy to me that we even need legislation for this, but uh, be that as it may, the White House uh, uh, began whipping votes, as you reported, against it to try to stop this, ultimately succeeded in doing so. Uh, Senator Sanders says he's gonna try again. And from sources that I know in Congress, that's not a bluff. He really is gonna reintroduce this. And that's what makes this 
relevant now to folks is um, that uh, you know, they're going to introduce this again. And the question is going to be, what is the language going to look like? Will it be the same? What will it change for him to try to get support? But this is, ball is very much up in the air. Uh, w- how do you see media responding to, to the second bite at the Apple when they bring this back? I mean, I hope that it's been, I hope that my reporting has kind of re-elevated it into the consciousness of... Uh, oh, clearly. No one was talking about it. And other, again, this other is reporters. a core constitutional question. Sure. But I think, um, you know... Uh, yeah, the White House basically said, you know, we don't want to deal with this. We don't want this in the in the in the news cycle. You know, we have other priorities, and it's shocking given the fact that um, you know Saudi leadership has walked all over the Biden administration. Humiliated They've done them. Lucy yeah. in the football over and over <laughs> again, and this is one more instance. I mean, this this had bipartisan buy-in. You know, you had senators and representatives from both parties saying this is the, this is the least we can do um, to pull, uh, you know military support back in, in this one instance. Um, and, you know, the Biden administration said that's too much, you know, that's that's ceding too much control. Um, despite the fact that, that it's been clear over and over and over again that Saudi Arabia has no intention um, of, of acting in good faith and negotiating in good faith, um, you know, with the U.S. Yeah, that's something we've covered pretty extensively here at The Intercept. Uh, another issue that media doesn't like to touch, and I, <laughs> you know, I can speculate as to why, but the reality is the administration is getting walked all over. They're making oil production decisions that just fly in the face of um, not just norms in the past, but specifically what the administration is asking for. And so you would think that this would be a layup. Now, you know, that's to say nothing. The fact that uh, the White House itself has said that there are going to be, quote, consequences. The, uh, you report in your story that the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Chair, very powerful figure, uh, Senator Bob Menendez, said that um, we were going to stop military support. Here's a prime opportunity to go ahead and do that, uphold um, uh, you know, one of the core components of the Constitution on an issue that, I got to say, is really Bipartisan. I know a lot of conservatives in the military and in the national security world, not to mention just ordinary people, that are, you know, completely on our side in terms of being very opposed to this war and our involvement in this war, which, as you said, has had a devastating and just profound humanitarian effect. Uh, millions of people, food insecure, going hungry, thousands of children maimed, as the UN pointed out um, last week. So uh, this just seems like a layup. Why is the White House whipping against it? And why are Senate Democrats not standing behind uh, uh, Sanders in, in this proposal? Well, you know, I think, you know, when the White House calls you up and tells you to do something, uh, you know, people often do it. I mean, I've I've had the White House call me up and tell me not to run a story, and I revel in uh, <laughs> telling them, no, uh, I'm going to run with the story Is I Is this have. why media but, doesn't ask these things and, and put these, thing, and, and put these well, things on yeah, the agenda? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think there is an extension of that logic. I mean, you see these reporters forming these really cozy relationships yeah. with senators. You know, there's there's no uh, aggression. There's no hostility. You see the their body language when they approach senators, the total reverence and um, willingness to to take, you know, no comment for an answer instead of, or are they you know, just like starstruck? Them. This is so interesting to hear this perspective. Yeah, I mean, from- it's, it's shocking to me. I mean, these people are supposed to be uh, representing um, Americans. They're supposed to be right. working for us. Um, and so the notion that, you know, and, and they work tirelessly to build uh, these protections, these, these senses of awe and fear and grandeur. And you know, if you have the privilege of of being uh, accredited press, and you have the ability to push them on on obvious conflicts of interests, or push them on moments where they are prioritizing um, their donors or their uh, political fortunes above the interests of the American people, and you don't take those opportunities, I mean, it's it's shocking to me. I mean, there is there's so few people who have that type of access. And to be uh, uh, cowed by by these people who are public servants um, is is never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, it's incredible. Changing gears for just a minute, you more recently had a story on uh, a a uh, piece of legislation before Congress now that would put uh, protections in place for journalists um, that report on uh, classified information to protect them from being uh, subpoenaed by courts under various conditions. Um, and that, again, sounds like something that's pretty uncontroversial to me in terms of maybe in Washington, maybe it's controversial, but across the country, I would imagine most people would be open to something like that. 
Um, you just you had heard through your sources that uh, Senator Grassley had a role uh, alongside Senator Cotton in stopping that piece of legislation from advancing. You just walked up to him, just like the the Sanders War Powers example, put the question to him, and he more or less cop to it. So once again, I ask you, why are you the one doing these things? Why aren't other reporters? Who, get, I, I picture them being a little more evasive and clever about dodging well, these things, well, and they just aren't. Well, I think you, you there's different spreads. I mean, there's there's different. Uh, uh, you know, overarching pressures that these reporters face from the corporate structure of, of their outlets. I think some are much more egregious and provide far less flexibility than others. Um, and there's a pressure to, you know, try to squeeze out, you know, whatever breaking news about the omnibus spending uh, uh, or whatever that's possible. Um, but again, I'm always shocked sort of like, you know, I remember um, on the Hill yesterday, I saw uh, Senator Feinstein, um, you know, going into the elevator. And, you know, at this point, her staff basically, you know, runs the entire operation. You know, she's she's really not um, all there. And yet it, it's just incredible. But, but she's but she's a U.S. senator. Right. And it, it was shocking watching these reporters kind of glance over at her and instead of seeing that as an opportunity to press someone, you know, and to, you know, try to highlight, you know, the fact that, you know, here is, again, a, a, a one of the most powerful people in the world um, walking by and, and, and an opportunity to try to get information and, and at the very least highlight, you know, the, the current state that she's in. Um, you know, instead it's like, oh, well, like we can't get anything on the omnibus out of her. You know, we can't get anything on this news cycle. Um, so they just so, go to like her chief of staff. And or, so, yeah, or, or just whatever, or just completely, you know, ignore her. And I think, um, yeah, I just think that there's a increasingly, uh, perverse set of, of incentives, um, you know, with, with the speed of the news cycle and with, um, you know, the, the competition between corporate outlets, uh, there's just really not an incentive to push uh, senators in this way. It's a shame because it doesn't have to be that way. As you've shown, you can just post things, walk up to them. They're not cordoned behind glass walls or anything. They're not hiding away. In, I mean, they're just out there and you can walk up to them. That's what's extraordinary to me um, is that that suggests that they face so little pressure. They don't have to worry about hiding these guys behind yeah. walls of AIDS and things like that. Yeah. It's just because nobody comes up to them and asks these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's shocking. I mean, it's also somewhat shocking too, especially some of these more seasoned people, you know, the sort of caution and reverence they hold. Is this like um, a West Wing sort of like you got to show this deference and they're just in awe of the, of the, of the stature of the office? Is I, it I, I think so. I mean, I think a lot of these people, uh, you know, have spent their entire lives, you know, dreaming about being able to talk to septuagenarian, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> lawmakers and, and sort of bow down before them. Um, but I think that, you know, there is this conditioning then that happens, you know, there's conditioning, um, you know, there, there, there's tremendous conditioning to try to um, make it seem like these people can't be held accountable ever, and that these people don't, oh, don't even work try. for us, yeah. you know, and that um, they are uh, intransigent and they know exactly what is going on. They know exactly what they're saying at all times. And, you know, a lot of them have no idea about their policy portfolios, you know. Right. So if you push them on that, you know, that's their job. Right. That is what, um, you know, that is what they were elected to do. And so they, they have a responsibility to answer your questions. Um, and, you know, that, that, that applies to all sorts of things, not just whatever's dominating the news cycle. Okay, well, um, this is a really helpful and insightful look at, I think, why congressional reporting uh, doesn't produce what, what you know, people really need and what would be very interesting. Um, so that's Dan Bogoslav of The Intercept. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, kid. Hey, guys. Ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah. We rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.